morning everybody welcome to morning practice just give me a sec sorry good morning welcome to morning practice as usual please practice according to your conditions and um, respect your limitations so let's begin close the eyes Imagine you're established in the hearts of all beings everywhere. We'll get, begin with the sound of Om three times to attract divine attention. Oh. Fix your mind on God alone. your thoughts in God alone. And in God you will live hereafter. Of this there is no doubt. May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice through our senses. May we acquire a strong desire for liberation from pain and suffering, and may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Let's do the mantra for purification to purify the space, the clouds, and all the psychic channels within. If you know it, of course, you may chant it along. If not, just imagine you're chanting through the voice of the guru and you drive all the benefits of all those purif purifying effects. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yaha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sabaya Pyantra Ha Schihi. I'm going to start off with the main breathing. So we'll do. Um, just no breath or tension. Just a calm. This is the calming type of breathing that settles the mind into quietness. So we're inhaling to the left. We make sure you plug both sides before you exhale, and back on the right. Inhale from the right. Close both sides of the nose. Exhale to the left. So there's no locks, obviously, because there's no breath or tension. But just try to keep your mind fixed on the space between the eyebrows. So the left hand in Yana Mudra, second finger and thumb connected on the left knee. The right hand, second and third fingers fold down. This is Vishnu Mudra. Turn the palm towards you, becomes the mudra that we use for pranayama. Just think about just settling your mind into stillness, which is what we want and what we, order to have, what we need in order to ha uh, be able to be a more adept at meditation. So, so sitting up very tall and straight. We'll guide you through it and then we can do maybe a few on our own. Exhale completely, empty the lungs. Close off the right side, inhale through the left. Close left, open right, exhale. Inhale through the right. Close right, open left, exhale. Inhale left. Close left, open right, exhale. Inhale right. Close right, open left, exhale. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Pause as you close both sides, exhale left. Remember to close the nose completely between breaths. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale. 
exhale left. Maybe lengthen the breath cycle. Inhale, fill up to the top of the chest. Exhale right. Deflate completely. Inhale right. Lift the chest. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale this time. Imagine a breath moving down towards the root of the body. Exhale right. Imagine breath coming right back up. Visualize the movement of the breath. Inhale right down. Exhale left back up. Inhale left. You can even imagine a coolness going down with your breath. Use your imagination. Feel these senses. Exhale right. Inhale right. Again, follow the breath down towards the root of the body. Exhale left. Feel the coolness coming up with the breath. Inhale left. Exhale right. Keep your mind occupied with the breath movement, the visualization. Inhale right. Exhale left. I'm trying to cultivate the concentrate the, the imagination here. Inhale right. The more you can imagine, the more you can realize for yourself and for others. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Back up. Continue a few more times on your own. Keep the same duration on each segment of the breath, inhales and exhales. Same quality as well. If you start to slump, straighten up again, sit tall and supreme. Focus your attention on a breath. If the mind starts to wander, just gently pull it back. After some time in practice, the mind stays fixed for a longer time. Make this a meditation in itself. Meditation is simply unbroken concentration. Next, when you breathe out to the left side, conclude. Take a few moments to just notice any changes in the state of the mind, the body, and the emotions. Just be like the witness, have no concern as to what you observe, have no judgment as to what you observe. Let's try to stay in that mindset of the observer all throughout the class. You are not the see you're not the doer, you are the seer.
Now, let's come standing, begin, continue the practice. Stand your feet about 10 inches apart, bring your arms in front of the body, breathing for inner healing. So bring about healing in the mental, physical, and emotional state, in a sense. From the heart, inhale up to the crown, draw the uh, yogi energy up there. Holding out the crown, hold the breath, make it available to all beings everywhere. Exhale out through the arms, imagine all the impurities draining out of the arms along with the breath just like water running out of a tap. Inhale again from the heart up to the space, to, uh, to the crown. Pull all the healing energy up there. And again, keep it there, make it available to all beings. Exhale out through the arms again, send out even more of the impurities out with the breath. Visualize all the emptying out. Last time. From the heart, inhale up to the crown. Watch the healing energy rise up there. Use your attention to attract it there to the crown. Then hold it there. Imagine all beings tapping into that healing energy. Exhale out through the arms. And release. So let's now continue with the exercises to help release even more impurities through generation of, generation of heat. Hands on the hips, circle the head. Feel as though the head were very heavy, rolling over its, uh, all around its pivot points. Try to see the floor in all the directions as the head moves around. Then change the direction of rotation. Starting the exercises now, so starting to use, um, do the exercises with energy and with enthusiasm and breathe with vigor to get the full extent of the benefits. Inhale, sweep the arms up, exhale down, continue. Next, arms come up over the head, spread your fingers, exhale, pull them down. Form fists. Now in front of the body, same movement with the hands. Inhale, exhale, pull in. And release. Arm swings. Throw the arms back behind the ears. Loosen the shoulders. And release. Now arms cross across the chest. Exhale, on this inhale, exhale, throw the arms back. Alternate the cross each time the arms come across the chest. Come up with a head inhale. Exhale, throw the body down. Just allow the body to hang out there. Relax completely. And then roll your way back up. Next one. Incorporate the squat, so if you can't go down all the way, just come down as far as you can. Be mindful of your knees. Inhale, reach the arms up. Come down into squat and the exhale. Come back up. Elbows out to the side, twist from side to side. Exhale as you complete the twist on each side. Again, 
incorporate the squat four movements inhale sweep the arms up exhale down inhale right up exhale down inhale exhale inhale exhale continue out in front of the body inhale circle around to the front exhale pull and then punch right back up next move is very similar except the circle and a quarter start with the hands down by the sides inhale circle around to the front circle and a quarter exhale pull and then drop the arms down the side left arm up inhale next bend exhale bend to the right right arm up inhale bend to the left on the exhale So the movements is the same but the breathing is a little bit different left arm up inhale bend to the right hold the breath go a little bit deeper come back on the exhale inhale up on the inhale with the right arm go to the left return on the exhale continue pull yourself deep into the stretch as you hold the breath Stretch the upper side of the body out, forming wrinkles on the underside of the body if possible. Push the ribs up and out to this upper side. Imagine all beings experiencing this through your body through your, and enjoying it through your senses. You want to practice in a way that makes you feel good because how you're feeling is to an extent affecting everybody, including God, who resides within. So, we want to be careful not to, we want to be careful to practice in a mindful way and to not go to a place of pain, anxiety, suffering, and distress. receptive in both both physically and mentally rigidity and closed-mindedness of course leads us to um, attachments that don't allow us to expand and that's for our true nature which is infinite one more on each side. And release. Come on to the hands and knees now. Cat cow. Many of you know this one. Inhale, arch the back. Toes open leg of the shoulders. Exhale, round the back. Inhale, exhale. 
Inhale, powerful breathing, as powerful movements. Exhale. Inhale, push the belly button down. Exhale. Throw it up through the lower back. Inhale, the heart's extending. Come down and forward. Exhale, push it right up through the shoulder blades. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale, stretch the body skin, exhale, and stretch the back skin, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Two more, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Come back to neutral back, then raise the right leg up on the inhale, exhale. Swing out to the left, sort of the right. Loosen up hip, throw the leg up and head back. Always again, in a mindful way, don't, um, no aggressive, Jerky movements. And then the other leg. Left leg up, inhale. Swing out to left. Keep the lower body anchored down from the hips, thighs, and the top of the, right to the top of the feet. Inhale, lift up the elbows, lift up the chest. Exhale, pass the elbows in front of the one another, elbow in front of the elbow. Inhale, come up. Exhale, down. Up and down. Engage the buttocks and the upper back muscles. Up and down. Up. Slide your hands up one on top of the other, forehead on the hands, breathe in, breathe out, soften everything. Okay, and you don't have to stick to the when you're doing your own practice, just move, just try to move all the joints in some way. So you're going to move your arms underneath your body with your palms down underneath your thighs. Just keep your upper body anchored down with the upper arm, um, with the legs now. Inhale. Too much, just do one leg at a time. Down, up, alternate. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Press down through the tops of the shoulders. Down, up, down, and down into the hands. more up down up and down and then lift your hips so you can take your arms up underneath and in front of your um, just underneath your forehead again breathe in breathe out soften hands up to the shoulders 
push all the way back into child's pose. Inhale, come up into high cat. This is four moments. Exhale, press the hips down between your hands, chest opens, head back. Cobra. Inhale, back up. High cat. Exhale, seat behind the heels. Inhale up. Rounding your back. Exhale, flexing your back, arching. Inhale, back up. Rounding. Exhale, flattening and lengthening. And then up. And forward. Try not to jam up the lower back of the back, and neck and back, exhale. Inhale, see, imagine you can see right through the skin and the loop into the spine, forward, and up. Try to ease in a way that keeps the curve in your spine always smooth, no kinks anywhere along the way, either at the bottom or the top edge. Points and forward, inhale, exhale back, and then up. Forward, like coiling, imitate the motion of the snake, up, down to your back, exhale all the way back, and then up, forward, up, tuck the chin in, make sure you don't close off the airway completely, back, exhale, and then up, forward, up, and back. And very gracefully and fluidly, but with power as well. Up, forward, up, and back. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One last time, up, forward. Relax here in child's pose. Just allow the arms to come alongside the body. Breathe in. Breathe out. Next, one, we're going to take our inhale to come into the cobra. So it can either come from above into baby plank and drop the hips just as we were doing before, or it can glide forward. So the glide looks like this. Inhale. Pull the floor towards you. The thighs down forward. Raise the head and hold the breath. As you hold the cobra. Exhale all the way back. Inhale again. Tones the floor towards you with your hands to propel yourself forward with more power and ease. Then hold the breath. Exhale back. Inhale. Look like the snake with its a boundless range of motion. Try to copy the form physically, mentally, and spiritually. Back. Inhale. Be regal and wise, just like the serpent. And spiritually, connect with God who resides within all beings. And back, exhale. So we're trying to tap into all the divine qualities, all the divine ways that God manifests in this form, in this being. back. Ultimately, we all dwell within God. Come forward. And back, exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath. Everything stops. All the mind fluctuations, the motions and the movements of the body have been still. Inhale. But bit by bit, our ability to stay still in the mind stays even when we're moving, even when we're thrown into other situations in day-to-day -day life. And back, exhale. Just remain as a witness, watching and observing it all. Then allow yourself, physical, mental, and emotional side, to just dance with it all, whatever comes your way. Two more. Inhale, come up. Hold the breath. And back, exhale. Last time, inhale. Eyes 
up be magnificent. Relax, in calf pose, breathe in, breathe out. Roll your way up, come onto your back. Inhale, reach the arms over the head, stretch out. Exhale, come into tuck, release the shoulders, chin to the knees. Inhale, extend. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, draw the legs out, draw the arms way over the head. Spread your fingers and toes. Exhale, pull in. Make yourself very compact. Form a fist with your body. Inhale. Exhale, pull in. Inhale. Inhale, extend, hold the breath and tuck, the forehead to the hands, if you can, your thumbs, concentrate on the straight in your eyebrows, even if your thumbs don't touch the head, just imagine or keep your attention at this space. Exhale, release. Inhale, again, pull it tight. Roll it back down, let the thighs and the abdomen, chin to the knees, heels close to the seat. And release, exhale. Inhale, stretch, pull in tight. Pinch the space between the eyebrows, imagine God sitting in the seat of the mind. Keep your mind fixed on the mighty one, the almighty one. Extend as Dharma says. And come in to the tuck. Hold the breath. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, sorry. Inhale, stretch. And pull in tight. Hold the breath. And release. Exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath and tuck. It is that one-pointed focus on and devotion to God that transforms the practice in something even higher and greater. Inhale, stretch. And pull in, tuck, hold the breath. And release, exhale. One more, inhale, reach up, push up to the heels, stretch the fingers, pull in. Very tightly. And release. Breathe in. Exhale, imagine you're fainting. Let go of all fatigue. And keep your mind calm even in those states of difficulty and challenge. This is what will ultimately pull you through. So, arms by sides of the body, raise your legs. Lift the feet, get with the momentum, throw the legs over your head, and then roll down, plant the feet, and come to standing. So we'll continue with sun salutations now. Bring the hands to the heart. Keep on imagining this practice as your divine duty to all beings everywhere. Surya Namaskara, sun salutation. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back, hips forward. Board it down, chest on the thighs, bend your knees if you need to, bring your hands to the ground. Right foot back, move down to the seat, come into high plank. Lower down, knees, chest and forehead to the ground. Glide forward into cobra, shoulders back, head back. Roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog, melt the heart. Come forward, bend foot between your hands, sit down to the seat. If that was difficult, you can lower the knees. If it doesn't make it all the way, just use your right hand to assist the foot forward. 
Then bring the feet back together again, chest on his thighs, head down. Come right up to stand, reach up and back, hips forward, stretch in the front of the body. Bring the heads back to the hearts. Inhale, reach up, stretch, lengthen. Come forward and down, Uttanasana. Watch the body move by itself. Left foot back, sit down to the seat. Keep imagining yourself as a witness, watch it all. Into plank, lower down knees, chest and forehead. Come forward to the cobra. Merge with the eternal and supreme witness within. Bring the seat all the way up and back. As well as that divine presence, whose is nature is love and non-judgment and compassion, put yourself into that mindset as well. Uttanasana. Come right up to stand, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up. Stretch up. Approach your true nature, which is infinite and boundless. Right foot back, sit down to the seat. Don't worry about the breath. Just move the body in a way that feels natural and comfortable. <coughs> that allows the breath to remain steady and even. Into the cobra. Make sure you don't jam up the neck between the shoulders and ears. All the way back into down facing dog. Now the heart. Right foot steps forward, softly to the hands. Feet together, move in a way that doesn't um, jar the witness, witness or agitate the witness. Come up and back. Hands back to the heart. And keep going up and back. Go down. Left foot back. See yourself in a practice you're trying to attain. With constant practice, it so manifests. Come forward into Cobra. Adamuka Savanasana. Left foot steps forward. You must do this in a way that doesn't keep you attached to the results and have let go of all expectations as well. Do it as a divine duty of love. Hands back to the heart. Change you that now. Reach the arms up, hips forward. Go down. Chest on the side, join the hands behind the back. Extend through the crown. Exhale, push the body into your legs. Plunge the head down towards the earth. The arms come over the head. Then place your hands down, the right foot back. Lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Inhale, rise up, lift the arms. Exhale, circle the arms down, bring the seat forward. Allow the body to fall back away from the legs. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lean back. Try not to crunch up the lower back. Keep extending on the inhale. Lift up out of the hips. Exhale, circle down. This time you come up. If you can, dry your hands. Kapiyasana. Pull your arms back. Come into crescent shape. Move, arch your back. And then bring your hands down. From here, if you can, you need to come back into plank, or if you can, raise the left leg up. Come forward, shoulders over the fingertips. Move the elbows to the sides of the body, come down to your chest first. Is it too much? Lower your knees down, or just come down knees, chest, forehead, like we were doing before. Into the cobra. Again, modify according to your condition. And back into down the facing dog. Now the right foot comes up if you can. First, before stepping between your hands. Shoulders come over the fingertips, the foot lands lightly. Drop the seat, inhale, come up. Tuck the tail, exhale, circle the arms down. Inhale, feel so the arms are attached right to the hip bones and just pull everything up. Inhale. Exhale, sink the hip forward. Inhale, come up again. Hands in Kali Mudra if you can, sink down the seat and pull the arms back. Arch the back, push the chest up. And then bring the hands back down. Step the left foot in to meet the right. Chest on the thighs, join the hands and pull the body down. Face the shins if you can, if your legs are straight, arms over the head. And then release the arms, come all the way up to standing. Arch back, hips forward. Back home, hands to the heart. Inhale, raise your arms up, engage the buttocks and your back to support you in the movement of going back. Come forward and down into Uttanasana. Chest again on the sides, but bend your knees, join the hands, pull the arms back. And pull the body forward, hands down, the head down towards the feet, arms over the head. Then bring the hands down, left foot back, lower the knee down. Inhale, rise up just as we did before. This time, turn to your right, sink your seat forward. Inhale, come up. 
Exhale, open up to the right. Inhale again. Tuck the tail. Exhale, open to the right. This time, inhale, come up. Kapiyasana again. Join the hands, sink down to the seat if you can. Pull the arms back, lift the chest, arch the back. And then come back down with the hands on either side of the right, the left, right foot. If you can, either in plank or swing the leg all the way up over the head. Come forward, shoulders over the fingertips. Go the elbow sides of the body to support you to come down or bring your knee down or knees, chest, forehead down. Come into the cobra. Toes close the neck out of shoulders. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Left leg all the way up and back. Step the foot between the hands, softly landing it. Lower the knees, sink down to the seat. Inhale, come up in a way that is pleasing to watch the Supreme Witness. Inhale, come up. Turn to left again, sink down to the seat. Open up to the side, one last time, inhale. Exhale, melt the hips down. Inhale, come forward. Join the hands together. Copy asana. Pull the arms behind the head. Arch the back. Lift the chest up. And then bring the hands back down. Step the right foot into the left. Chest on our thighs. Join the hands and pull the body down. Uttanasana. Forehead to the shins. Hands over the head. Then release. Bring the arms back over the head. Arch back. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms, exploring all the beautiful, wonderful ways that the body can move. Plant the hands down, lift the head and chest. You can either walk back or jump back. Press into your hands, bend your elbows as you go back so you land softly, no big jar movements. You can either do cobra here or press your hips up off the ground, come into upward facing dog. So then here, just try to push your hips forward and your head back, your chest forward. Feel like a dog howling at the moon. Pull the nose up towards the sky. Then roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Here, bounce to the chest. Try to get your chest closer to yours, the belly towards your thighs. If you're flexible, maybe your forehead will come down, nose, maybe even the chin. Soften through the shoulders. Try not to bend at the elbows. Oh, imitate a dog for stretching its back, and most importantly, imitate the loyalty and try to embrace the loyalty of the dog. Try to keep that quality in yourself as well. Devotion, the loyalty to the master. To the master. Then lift the heels, bend the knees, look between the hands. Jump or walk your feet forward. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come all the way to standing. Reach up and back. Come back home, hands to the heart. And one final time, lift your arms up. Go down gracefully, fold the body in half. Bow so in humble lifts. Inhale, left and head of the chest, and then come back into ch um, chaturanga or right on your belly. Any exit you like, and come, and come into upward facing dog or cobra. Now from here, round your back and you come back into down facing dog. Melt the heart. Roll forward over your toes, round your back, oscillating between the two poses. Uncoiling, towels cut the neck out of the shoulders, body out of the trunk out of the hips. Roll back into downward facing dog. Soften it in every sense. And then come forward again into upward facing dog, shoulders back, chest wide. Roll over your toes, round your back, and sink the heart right down. Melt it again in every sense of the word, physically, mentally, and physically and emotionally. Now lift the heels, bend the knees, look between your hands. Bring your feet forward softly, hop in the walking, pull the body down onto your legs. Come all the way up to standing, reach up and back. And come back home, hands to the heart. Take a deep breath in, from the heart up this space to the eyebrows. Back to the heart, always come back to the place of divine love, always stay rooted in love towards all beings, and release and cult continue cultivate that love through imitation of them. Think of the imitation as a high form of reverence, 
standing on your left foot, take the right foot up. And from here, you should start a tree. So you can either take your foot against the inseam, somewhere anywhere along the leg. Press the base of toes firmly, grip with your toes and the heel, just not against the knee joint itself, either below or above. If you're having trouble balancing, keep your toes on the ground. If you have a lotus, you can bring your knee up to your shoulder and press the outside edge of the foot against the hip crease and pull the knee down if you can. Option is you can reach around, you can either take your elbow or bend forward, take hold of the big toe if you can. And the other hand comes to the heart. You don't have a lotus, you don't have the foot, just keep your hands in front of the chest. And then you can either raise your arms up with that free arm if you're binding or both hands above the head. Lift up tall. Good. If you want, you can bend to your right a little, push your hips out towards your left. fell down, don't worry about it, just do your best. The other side, so you can take your foot again, like so, and keep your hands at the heart and then join them up together with over your head, or you can take your lotus again, or any other modification. To take the bind, you bend for a little bit, so you can take the foot more easily, or you can just hold again the elbow, like this. Okay, so, stay upright. Get a foot bound, you can raise the right arm up. Keep reaching for the sun to make yourself feel more resplendent in your offerings by absorbing this light and the warmth. And then bend to your left if you like. Push hips out towards the right. Inhale, come up. Exhale, down. So we'll do another, another sequence. Plan down through the right uh, left foot. Take the right heel up from the inside if you can. Bring the leg out and the arm out. Try to have the toes and the fingers in the same line. So it might look like a T shape. If you're more flexible, pull the foot up higher. Lean a little bit to your left so that you can keep your fingers and toes at the same height. Try to get your left right leg up high. Be magnificent like the dancer. All the poses say, this is for you, God. Yours to do your service. Every pose and offering. Now from here, release the foot. Make sure it comes down softly. Try not to touch the ground in between. Come and go right into eagle. So if you need to, you can bring your fingertips on the ground first, bend your knee, and then Bring the right leg up higher. Fly the arms out to the side. Soar like an eagle skimming the surface of the ocean. Arch the back. Try to get your head about the height of the knee. Lift the right leg up as high as you can over your head. And then press into your left foot to come back. Try down near the foot again. If you lose your balance, just be unconcerned. Don't attach the results. Take hold of the left heel from the inside. Bring the leg up. Keep trying. It's the effort that's most important. Bring a little bit to the right to get the same line with the fingers with the toes. Engage the leg muscles as the leg's coming down so it doesn't drop heavily and right down to the ground. Moving weight as mindful. Bend your standing leg a little bit and sweep the arms up and back. Or take your fingertips down if you need to, to help you to find your way eventually into stillness and ease. Arch the back. You have to imagine yourself as an eagle gliding, soaring through the air. Push into the right foot, take a half breath in, and come back. Good, so now it's stand in the middle of the mat. Bring the fingertips together. 
facing the long edge of the mat. Jump your feet apart. Arms out to the side. Go to your left. If you're facing the wrong way, just jump 180 degrees. Try to come down low so your knee is over the toes. Be strong like a warrior. Back leg is strong. Lean forward a little bit to give a sense of purpose and direction and leadership. Come into the consciousness of a warrior. Bring the right arm up to meet the left. Come up into Vita Badrasana 1. If your hip can't turn all the way, you can press, roll onto the ball of foot and lift the left, the right heel. Come up, bring your head back, express the utmost devotion. Good. From here, make your way back into Warrior 2. Join the hands behind the back immediately, join, and then lift the chest, bring the head back. Dive down. So you might have to lift your seats a little bit, really engage the back leg, push the right thigh back. Go to the right a little bit so that you can get your head down beside your foot. Bring the arms overhead. You can always bring your right knee down to the ground if you need to, just like this. Okay, just express the humbleness of a warrior in this pose. A warrior is great and mighty and powerful, but humble because he knows, or she knows that she's he or she is devoted to the service of others. Now release the hands, bring them down on the ground, lift the head, and lower the back knee down. Sink down to the seat. Keep our seat forward, bring the left hand to the knee, the right hand slides back to the right foot. So you can stay here. You can bring the left arm over the head. Try to create a nice curve through the side body without Creating wrinkles in the waist. For those who are very flexible can do swan. If you know that variation, pull the foot up towards um, into the crook of the arm, the fingers close to the ear, and your left hand comes to meet the right. Then push the foot away from the arm, the shoulder. You can do that one. If it's too much, you can stay like this. Or turn forward, your chest forward. Copy asana, bring your arms back. Pull the arms behind the ears. Again, form a nice crescent shape. Move with your body. You can also keep your hands on the front knee. Push into your knee and lean away from the leg. Try not to crunch your lower back. Pull the body by the hips. And pull yourself back up. Bring your hands down on the inside of the right left foot. Move the left foot out. And then just drop towards your right so you can get the right hip, hopefully, and uh, perhaps in the right forearm to anchor down. And then roll to your left so you can get your left forearm down. So as I'm doing this, I'm making sure the knee's not falling away from the shoulder. If that happens because the foot's too close, move the foot out a little bit further. Alternatively, you don't have the foot way on the outside and you're still leaning forward. Try to get your hips as even as possible. Hug the knee to the shoulder. If you're more flexible and the pelvis is down on the ground already, you can move your arms to the outside of the foot. Eventually, keep dropping your chest down. Imagine there's lots of weight in your hip pockets. Then the rest of the body will eventually follow. And the hips are down, the pelvis, the chest, and maybe the chin. Look like a lizard sunning yourself on a warm earth. back up. Move your left foot in underneath the left knee. Bend the toes under your legs. Look like a box. Okay, so your left leg is at a right angle here. Right arm up. You can either just take the outside knee, other hand to the, sink, to the seat. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Turn to your left. Pull the left shoulder all the way back. If you like, you can lean back. Take your hand to the heel. Push your knee and your foot towards your left, right as you turn towards the left. This is too easy. Come forward again. Parivita Pashvakanasana. Right arm up. Pull the body down so the elbow comes to the outside of the leg. The arm can stay on the outside of the leg. Join the hands together as a heart. Your hands start at the shoulders, but then as you push the left hand into the right, your hands come more in the center of the front of your chest. And roll the left shoulder all the way back. Pull 
and left it back to head forward and spin your chest upwards. Try to have at least the left shoulder over your left, your right shoulder, or take your left shoulder further back. Maybe at some point you'll be at the same height from the ground. If you know other variations, go ahead. You can take your knee up off the ground here, like that, or you can take the bind first. It might be easier to do the bind before you take your knee up. So if you know that variation, go ahead. And that shoulder moves back. Always try your best. Go to the edge of your potential every time so you can surpass it and keep redefining your edge. Now release. Bring the right hand down in front of the shoulder. Spin towards the left. Keep the left right foot where it is and cross your right ankle over. Vasi Stasana, press your hips forward. You can also just drop your right knee down if it's too much. If you know how to do other variations, you can again go ahead, slide your left toes back if you like. Spin on the yoni palm, come into Urdhva Dhanirasana or Wild Thing. Going over to Urdhva Dhanirasana, you can keep on spinning your hand and then flip your hips and chest up until your hands and your feet land beside one another. All the way back again. Push into your hand, keep your hip high, return to downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out, not the heart. Left foot steps between your hands, spin on your feet, face along edge of the mat, come all the way up, arms out to the side, go to the other side now, turn to the right. If you're facing the wrong way away from the camera, so you can't have the, just turn yourself around 180 degrees. Come forward again with a sense of purpose, strong and mighty like a warrior, confident, powerful. Swing your left arm up to meet the right. Again, turn on your heel, uh, turn your heel up if you need to, turn on the ball of the foot. Reach up, straight line from the base is fine, right up to the fingertips, allow the head to drop back. Again, with an endless expression of devotion, always on the mind. Come back to warrior two. Join the hands behind the back. Pull the hands down, inhale, lift through the chest, bring the head back. Exhale, push the left hip back a little bit, lift the hip, and then come down. Go to the left a little bit so you can get the forehead on the ground, the arms over the head. If you need to again, lower the left knee down. Embrace quality or embody that, that in, in, in humble spirit. Then release, bring the hands down to the ground, lift the head and bring the knee down on the back leg. Here, right hand to the right knee, slide your left arm back, curve the spine, lean back away from the leg. Arch your back, feel like your Mussolini as Dharmaji says, open up your chest. And from here, if you know that variation of swan, you can pull the foot up. If you get your foot right in the hip crease, you lean towards your foot so that it's close to shoulder and your fingers close to ear when your right arm comes down and around to the right, uh, right side of the head. You might be able to walk your fingers more easily together and push the foot away from your shoulder. If that's too much, of course, you can either raise your right arm like this, do it with one arm, or turn forward, both arms up or any modification thereof. Stretch the arms back, pull the body back, the hips. Inhale, lift through the chest, come back up. Hands down to the ground. Move the right foot out a little bit to your right. Roll to your left, fall to your left, so your left forearm and the left hip maybe anchors down. Roll to the right so you can get the right form down. If you can't get your hips are too, uh, if you're um, a little bit of hip mobility, just stay on your hands and just keep telescoping your chest forward. You can get your hips down, your pelvis down, the rest of the body will eventually follow. Keep tugging like the floor towards you, lengthen. Stretch forward, the longer you stretch, or the further further you stretch, the more the body comes closer to the ground, eventually might 
come right down. Are you checking off your rest? Just take your time and just dance with it. Keep on trying to keep your practice regular so that you advance more, you make more steady, rapid progress. Now come back onto the hands. Pull the foot back towards you, bend the toes under. Come into the box shape again. I'll do it this way so you can see. Left arm up, hands to the outside of the knee, right hands to the seat. You can push the lower back up and in. Turn to the right. You can lean back. See if you can take your hands to heel. Push the knee and your toes towards the left as you turn towards the right. Go over your right shoulder. But you get some speed still if you're, even as you're pushing to the left with your foot, your foot and your knee, you resist with your knee and your foot. So it gives a little bit of counter resistance. You can either take your left arm up, go a little bit deeper, or if you want to go even further, left arm up, pull the elbow down. Notice how the arm is sitting on the outside of the leg. Right hand pushes into your left. So if you're staying down here, you want to push the right hand into the left so that you can get your body up higher so your center of the chest comes to your thumbs. And roll the right shoulder all the way back until the right shoulder is over the left or even further, further back to the right. Take the bind if you like. Use your right hand if you need to guide the hand underneath the leg. Push your hips back. Then maybe your hands will find one another. Pull the right shoulder back. Perhaps lift the back knee up off the ground. Push through the heel. All these little tricks. They come with constant practice and exploration of the forms. Now release. Left hand down from the left shoulder. Keep your left hip high, just spin towards the right. Right foot crosses over the left or the left knee down if you need to. Vasi Stasana. Feel like a kite being blown by the wind. Push your hips forward. Make sure you don't drop into your shoulder. Keep your arm fully extended. If you want to, again, slide your right toes back. Spin on the hand. Heel the palm. Fingers facing uh, towards the uh, middle of the mat. Come into Wild Thing or go all the way into Urdhva Dhanirasana if you know how to get there. the same way. Spin on the hand and return. Keep your hips high back into downward facing dog. Good. And then from here, right foot steps to the hands. Spin on your feet facing on the edge of the mat. Hands out to the side and come up. From here, jump your feet and your arms by side to by. Stand tall into dasana. Be tall like a mountain. From the base of the spine, imagine at the base of the mountain, up to the crown, imagine as a summit. Exhale back down to the base of the spine. Remain solid and unshakable and unmovable in your devotion to the practice. In your intent to serve others. And come down. Serve others again through just the attention on the Supreme Self. So you can either come into Child's Pose and from there breathe in, breathe out, soften. From here you can just come into um, Hair Pose. Just lift your seat. You'll feel a stretch in the back of the neck. If it's too intense, you just move your head forward a little bit so you're on the top of the head. Keep your attention on the spaces in the eyebrows. So a few options here, you can bring your hands down beside your knees and lift up your seat. Walk your feet, your feet forward so your hips are more over your shoulders. And press just underneath the knees against the elbows and then you can maybe lift your toes up. Even if you just flick your toes away from the ground, pull your toes back, you're already in inversion. Just start a headstand. If you can get your knees higher up onto your arms and your toes up, so you can lift up your knees above your elbows. And 
maybe eventually pull your feet back, your knees come over your hips, and your arms, your legs come up. A little bit more easy is to split your legs, one leg forward, one leg back. Keep your foot very close to the ground, the front foot, so that you can just come down easily. Don't jump into it. Now from here, you're comfortable. You can switch your hand positions to come onto your fingertips, your palms facing towards you, your fingers equally spread. Keep your weight on the top of the head, most of the weight there. If you feel comfortable, peel off your fingers, and maybe come on to just what you can. Come right on to the index finger, the very tip. All the attention again on the top of the head. Again, all these variations do according to your comfort level. Don't go to a place of anxiety where you cannot find stillness. You're just constantly spinning because of the anxiety. It is not what you want to transmit. Come down softly. Child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Soften. Relax. And even the rest moments be offered up. Eventually, all action thoughts and words beyond the mat become an offering as well. So scooch forward. Come onto your back. You can either to, let's bring your feet close to the seat, lift the feet, tuck your shoulders under, come into bridge pose. Your chest comes towards your chin. Try to make your chest look like a wall. Lift up the heels if you can. Bring your feet a little bit more in so you can get your chest even higher. Tilt, curl the tail under towards the backs of the knees. And then when you drop your heels, you want to try to really push so that you don't feel like your knees are over your toes. It should be the back of the knees right in line with your heels, straight line. Of course, you modify as you need to, so you can be steady in a pose. Now you can either stay here or you can bring your hands to your seat. The heels or palms roughly in your lower back, fingers facing towards the backs of the knees. If you feel comfortable, bring one knee up, bring the leg up, pull it a little bit further over beyond your, behind your head, and keep pushing your seats in your hands, your hands into your seat, bring your right foot up to meet the left. And then, so you might be able to come right into shoulder stand from here, push into your back, lift your feet up high. Other way to do this is to just rest your seat on a block. So you just come down lower. Where my hands are is where you put your block, basically. You just rest your seat on your block and have your legs extended up. Come up very tall if you can. And from here, hinge at the hips. Bring your feet down behind your head, plow pose. If your feet are on the ground or behind your head, you can take your hands down to the ground. You can bring your thighs against your body, your knees on either side of the head. Squeeze the knees on the side of the head to try to close off the organs of the senses, the ears and the eyes. Remove yourself from the distractions coming in from the eyes and the ears. If this is too much, you can just come into half into happy baby pose. Just come onto the back, take all the edges, outer edges of the feet, and just come down. So again, knees come down to your side of the body. Do what you need to be doing to find stillness. Can't wait to exit now. Hands behind your back, fingers, palms down, index fingers and thumb tips touching. Bring your feet down onto your wrists. And if you feel strong, once your seat's on the wrists, you can keep bringing your legs down to about 45 degrees. 
cushions the elbows point and lift your back up off the ground. So your body looks like a little bit like a V or a check mark. Push your chest up, move the elbows in a little bit more. Bring the top of the down. Keep power charging your legs. If it's too much, keep your legs up. Just bring them down to the ground. Last streak of breath. Breathe very fast and nose like a sniffing dog. Breathe in, breathe out, relax. Arms over the head, come to seated position. You can roll to the side if you need to. Just come up any which way you can. So bend your knees if you need to for Paschimottanasana. Inhale, reach up. If you have very tight hamstrings, you keep your knees bent. Reach. Toe pull the edge of the feet or just hug your legs to your body like so. Inhale, push the chest towards the knees. Exhale, melt your body onto your legs. If you can go with your legs straight, go ahead. Keep your chest with your thighs, your armpits just a little beyond the knees. Imagine the top of the head touching the top of the, the fronts of the feet the insteps. All the attention to the space, the base of the spine. Imagine that spine going ever longer out of that source. Maybe I'll come back up. Hands face behind. You need to pull your feet in and you are feeling, if you can either just keep your chest up and bring your head back. If you can, however, lift your seat up, throw your hips up, your chest higher than the shoulders, bring your head back. If you're stronger, your feet a little bit forward. So make it so that you can get your toes to stay on the ground, roll the thighs inwards. And then bring your head back and then breathe very fast again, Bastrika. Extended, left hand to the outside of the right uh, shin, not too close, lower footed forward, right hand behind your back, center of the back. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Exhale, turn to the right. Shoulders in line from one ridge to the mat. Make sure one heel is not in front of the other. Try to keep your heels together. Push out through the heel that's a little bit behind, uh, like towards you. And you're getting your legs as long as possible. Rotate yourself around that right arm that's supporting you from behind. Come back, go to the other side. Make sure you're not leaning back. Keep your left hand right against the back, center of the back. Lift up to the chest, and go two over your left shoulder. Try to imagine that spiraling action of the spine, imagine you can see right through your skin and see the spine turning, um, spiraling upwards. Good, return, lie on your back. Ease your way down softly. down on the ground, relax completely. Take a deep breath in. Gather up all the tension in your body, all the efforts. Exhale, just feel as though it just dropped right out of the body into the ground below. Let go of it all. Just surrender completely to relaxation. The whole body, let go of all the physical barriers that prevent you from being completely receptive to all the incoming benefits. 
let go of all the mental and emotional blockages as well. Whether it's fear, whether it's doubt, whether it's a sense of uh, lack of self-worth, whatever it might be, lack of confidence. Through the act of devoting your practice to others, through selfless service, you gain all the benefits to an even higher extent. Stay in that mindset of offering, but have no expectations and receive everything. Try to imagine you're taking the best of the best of all the benefits of all the qualities you're trying to cultivate to approach a true nature, which is essentially love, wisdom, compassion. Boundless potential. Imagine it all flooding into you. Imagine the mess beams of light and energy coming right into your pores. Just direct it all to the center of the chest and the right side of the physical heart, which is the location of the spiritual heart, which is where God, the highest self, the divine essence resides. And will all those benefits to be sent out to all beings. Exclude no one. Extend your compassion to all beings. Now ingrain that in your mind by saying to yourself the following sentence three times. I see God in all beings and love all beings equally. your way back to seated position. Prepare to come back from Shavasana. Feel the body awakening and then make your way back into a seated position. With the intent of continuing to carry on your mission of spreading love and joy and peace to all beings being yourself a beacon of light for all those who are feeling or who are feeling that they're in a place of darkness. We'll close the practice with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Instill the sense of peace within, send out to all beings everywhere. May all beings feel that peace of mind that resides within. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Be receptive to the grace of God. All is within. Namaste.
you so much for joining. Have a wonderful day. Just a reminder, Saturday's class, if you join that class, is on Sunday instead at the same time, 8.30. See you soon.